It's hard to say what makes one breakout performance more special than another. Landing a major role in a movie or TV series is challenging enough. And it's always a long shot that any project will ever become popular, let alone a hit. But I can't think of a more challenging position to break out from than being cast as a character that the writers are fully intending to kill off in the first season, and somehow turning that around to starring in every episode. You had originally intended to kill off a character in episode 9, but you only got to episode 7. Yes. Who, who were you going to kill off? I was going to kill off this gentleman right here. Thank God for the right strike. <laughs> we'll never get to know what Aaron Paul's career would have looked like if he had been killed off early, as Breaking Bad maintained such a revolving door of charisma that he may have just been forgotten about. Prior to playing Jesse Pinkman, Aaron Paul was a jobbing actor, typically landing a small TV role here or there for just one episode. But it was in 2008, at the age of 29, that his life would change forever when he became the co-star of what many consider to be the greatest series ever made. The performance unsurprisingly earned him three Emmys, as the character became not just the heartbeat of the series, but the moral guiding voice. But what is it about this performance that made the writers change their mind? From what I can tell, there are three keys to understanding what made Aaron Paul so captivating as Jesse Pinkman. Let's start with the physicality of the character. Because he has a father-son, teacher-student relationship with Walt, Aaron adopts a less mature, more rebellious physicality. He drags his body around, he leans lazily, he looks away dismissively. All of these traits are quite big, which makes the character more memorable, to the point anyone could easily do an impression of Jesse Pinkman. Probably by saying his catchphrase. Bitch. Bitch. Yeah, bitch! Magnet! Early on in the series, he serves as the comic relief, as Walt and Jesse's dynamic resembles the odd couple. Except the stakes are so much higher. But there's so much more to Jesse than just a catchphrase. Aaron shows us the character's vulnerability through his physicality. As someone who flunked out of school and is looked down on by his own family, Jesse is insecure and defensive, so he always feels this need to verbally fight with everyone. He feels he has to speak louder to ensure his voice gets heard, but he doesn't just turn the volume of his voice up, he turns his physicality up. Notice how literally in your face Jesse is. With every word, Aaron jerks his face forward, getting closer and closer to the person he's talking to or screaming at. This happens consistently throughout the series. Jesse makes his point by moving his head closer to the character, which physically places him closer to us. So now our relationship with him feels more intimate. Because Walt is the more stoic and mature one, we often see him standing or sitting still, while Jesse is a tornado of motion around him. This contrast is why Cranston and Paul create such great chemistry on screen. No pun intended. Because Aaron isn't just selling us on Jesse's feeling in each scene, he's helping to highlight Walt's. If they were both stoic, the scene is steady but less emotionally intense. If they're both highly physical, then the scene devolves into hysteria. But by having two characters with completely different temperaments, the audience can identify with both and usually falls somewhere in the middle, not knowing what they'd do in this situation either. Aaron physically makes Jesse a chaotic live wire. He's not someone who thinks, he's someone who acts. So we see him constantly in motion, running, pacing, turning away from the person he's talking to, belting his face forward at the person he's talking at, or using lots of wild hand gestures. This feeds into the next key, emotional transparency. Breaking Bad is a stressful show to watch. The characters are always under pressure to find ways out of life and death situations. And in this stressful environment, Jesse is the most visibly stressed character, which subconsciously makes us empathize with him more than everyone else. It's important to remember how many different ways this character could have been played. He could have just been the comic relief with a catchphrase. He could have just been angry or irrational or much cooler about what's going on. But Aaron makes Jesse completely emotionally transparent. What do I mean by that? There's not a single scene in which we don't know exactly what Jesse is feeling, even if he's trying not to show it. 
Breaking Bad is a show filled with secrets, deception, and betrayal, so having just one character that's consistently emotionally transparent makes him more trustworthy. We never have to worry about Jesse pulling a fast one on us, or outsmarting everyone for his own self-interest. He's not built that way. Jesse feels everything, and therefore we emotionally attach to him because we're feeling it with him. Aaron uses many different tools to show us what the character is experiencing internally. He usually allows the emotion to squeal its way through his entire body, so you can feel it even if he's not saying anything. A trademark Jesse Pinkman move is to look up to the sky, as if he's searching for answers, unable to comprehend the cruelty of this world. It's as if the feeling punches him in the gut, and then he looks up to the heavens. We see this when his own parents kick him out of his aunt's house. When Andrea tells him that her younger brother was the one that shot Combo. When he sees the news report of the missing boy that Todd shot. And even when he's about to be killed by Jack in the desert. When he's stressed, he's always rubbing his face or hiding his head in his hands. And when he doesn't know what to say or he's holding himself back from saying something, he rolls his tongue around his mouth and gnashes his jaw from side to side to express his discomfort with what's happening. He's never just sitting perfectly still and thinking, he's always physically feeling something. Let's take this scene as an example. Jesse has just discovered that children are being used to push their product and wants to take revenge on Gus's men. Right up front, we see Jesse's face. He looks nauseous and nervous about what he's about to reveal compared to Walt, who's completely fine. Then as he pitches his idea, we see a mixture of sadness and rage. His lips are tight and snarling as each word tumbles out of his mouth, as if he's furious he even has to explain why this is wrong. Then watch this moment closely. Jesse is about to show us that he wants revenge, before he even tells Walt that's what he wants. Take a look. They used it. The way the emotion squirms through his hands, it's communicating that he wants to wring their necks. Try as he might, he can't contain his anger. Now let's contrast this to when Jesse doesn't want to take violent action because the victim is innocent. When Walt asks Jesse to shoot Gale, after Walt killed those thugs on Jesse's behalf, Aaron shows us a completely different set of emotions. So many feelings rush to the surface here, Firstly, shock at what he's hearing. He can't believe they're really talking about murdering someone that isn't trying to harm them. Also, notice Aaron's eye work, little micro movements to show Jesse is calculating what it all means and what to say next. Very briefly, they shoot up to Walt, then his pupils pan away and he closes his eyes as if he doesn't want to see that this is really happening, then turns his whole head. So it starts as shock, but the predominant emotion that keeps traveling through him is shame. And that's what's so complex about this scene. Aaron isn't just playing it as a guy who doesn't want to do something. He's also playing it subservient and ashamed because he feels he owes Walt for wiping out those guys, but he knows he can't return the favor as he just can't handle this. I can't do it, Mr. White. This temperament is a sharp contrast to the Jesse we're used to seeing, the big, bombastic, always getting in your face Jesse. Instead, we see someone subdued and broken. This leads into the final key, emotional intensity. When Jesse isn't trying to restrain an emotion, Aaron is sensational at serving it up raw for the world to see, outwardly showcasing the psychological distress of the character, whether he's in the process of hurting someone or feels in danger himself. Just look at how he reacts when he finds the rice and cigarette. The stress of the situation floods through him, and he starts rubbing his face, stretching his skin, then locks his hands around his own throat, restraining his breathing, then starts to weep, the veins beginning to bubble from his forehead. All of this completely makes you forget that you're watching a fictional TV show, because he's selling the emotion as completely candid and authentic. In the most gut-wrenching scene, Jesse is forced to watch Todd shoot Andrea on her doorstep. And for me, two equally powerful performances are taking place at the same time. How it looks, 
and how it sounds. Visually, if you took a still photograph of this, the horror is written all over it. His face is red with pressure, his eyes are streaming, his mouth agape. But when you just listen to the sound, it's a disturbing experience of its own. <laughs> This is because Aaron Paul always dares to go all in, in every scene. He gives it everything he has, which must be emotionally draining to do take after take after take. What's lovable about Jesse Pinkman is that he's never just being violent or evil. When he points a gun at someone he cares about, it emotionally impacts him just as much as the victim. When he accuses Walt of poisoning Brock, there's a unique blend of boiling rage, grief, betrayal, and fear. We see a huge flow of tears, literally squirting off his face as he speaks. And yet again, Cranston and Paul's complementary contrast is at play here. Walt being steady and stoic, while Jesse is a tornado of physicality and emotion. Even though Jesse is technically the violent threat in this scene, Aaron plays it as the victim. His lips are trembling, his eyes scrunched together in pain. Then as the scene peaks in tension, Jesse presses the gun against Walt's temple, and just look how expressive he is. Veins are literally bursting out of his head. You can see the agony inside of him. It feels real. And as the final example, when Jesse realises Saul had Huel lift the rice and cigarette from him, he bursts into the room in a maniacal rage. But he's so emotionally charged that his eyes start to glisten with tears. Aaron never just plays one emotion at a time. There are always several bouncing around inside of him, pulling him in different directions. Then as Saul confesses and the betrayal sinks in, he's like a wild animal, his eyes locked onto his target, no blinking, and his breathing is so intense that it causes his teeth to chatter. Aaron never chooses to play it cool, calm and collected, he plays it raw and intense. These are just some examples, but there are countless others, as Aaron manages to manifest the character's true feelings with every second he's on screen. Sometimes it's pouring out of him, other times it's with something as little as a look or a physical twitch. In the first season, Jesse Pinkman's character description calls for someone who's a bit cheeky, a bit funny, and a bit cool. But by playing him as someone so emotionally wounded and transparent, we connect with him faster, intuitively trust him, and therefore root for him on a deeper level. And that's why keeping Jesse alive was the best decision the writers ever made, as it allowed Aaron Paul to do what he does best, and breathe life into the show. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more of it, please do consider supporting me on Patreon, as it really does make a difference to how much content I can pump out. Or if you can't afford that, then simply like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below to help the algorithm do its thing.